Hello, hello, my name is Dr. Rachel Gainsbury, and I am obsessed with all things short-term rentals, revenue streams, and helping you navigate your career, real estate, and your busiest and most wonderful seasons of life. I'm an immigrant, a pharmacist, a wife, and a mom who took one guest room rental and turned it into a multi property, seven figure real estate business, which has also landed us on TV. I'll teach you the real secrets and everything you need to build a short term rental business that you love. I discuss the hard topics, mistakes I've made and the mistakes others have made. So you don't have to make them for yourself. Financing, automations, acquisitions, low occupancy, scaling and building your team all while balancing your life are all subjects to be discussed here. Consider me that one best friend you can come to with your short-term rental business questions. So grab your coffee, get comfortable as you get ready to learn and grow with me. This is the Luxury Short-Term Rental Doctor podcast. Yes, this is being live stream. Hi, Bar. Hi, how's it going? It is awesome. I am so super excited to have you here today as our expert partner in the direct booking world. And so super excited, super stoked, actually super interested in learning. So this is totally outside of my area of expertise. So Bart, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Where are you located? What time is it right now? And all of the good things. Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you so much for having me on this uh, on this for on this forum, and uh, and I'm excited to share today with you guys. Um, I kid you not, I woke up. So for me, it's 10:30 in the morning right now. I woke up at 6 a.m. I did a 40 kilometer ride around the city. Um, super pumped, super excited. So sort of to get my ideas and juices flowing for today. Um, I, uh, my name is Bart Sobies. I run a business that helps accommodation owners and managers and short-term rental hosts get more direct bookings. It's a huge opportunity that really does get missed by a lot of, of small businesses. And the biggest problem that most people face is they just don't know how to get started. And even if you do know how to get started, how do you make sure that it actually works and you get those conversions? So that's what I do with my team. Um, I'm the CEO of iBooked.online. Um, we've got thousands of customers all over the world. We cater to tens of thousands of guests that make direct bookings through our website. Um, and that's what we do. Awesome, awesome. And it's such an honor to have you here today. I got to tell you, a lot of the OTAs, they have their own little side direct booking site where we piecemeal it together, but it never looks quite right. So I am so grateful to have you here today because let me tell you what, having an opportunity to retarget my guests and having them come back and book with me directly is a dream come true for an accommodations owner, for a short-term rental operator, right? So that mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with all of the rules and confines per se. And, you know, I'm not going to slam Airbnb, you know, I'm not going to slam the person who took me to the dance, right? But you want to have that additional, I call it diversification. You want to give your, your homeowners um, your guests an option as well. What are your thoughts about the importance of direct booking sites? Yeah, look, I think that there's there's a, a few different things here. So there's one where you've got opportunity and saving commission. Um, and you save that pipe commission by getting new guests to book with you or to get repeat guests to book with you. And there's really sort of these different sales funnels or these different methods where people come and book with you. Now, the reality is if someone's quite loyal to Airbnb or booking.com or VRBO or any of these OTA platforms, it's very, very difficult to get them to book direct. But if they've stayed with you before and they've had a great time, the next time that they search you out, they're going to look for you direct and they're going to look for your website. They're going to look for your presence. So you've got this opportunity to get those repeat guests to come back to you. But there are different ways that actually people actually do book direct as well. And one of the other ways that people will book direct is they'll jump onto Airbnb, they'll look up your property and they'll go, oh, that's kind of nice. Now let's see if there's a little bit more information about this particular property. So what they'll do is they'll jump off of one of the OTAs and they'll do a Google search. 
when they do that Google search, they're going to see you and they're going to go, oh, cool, that looks cool. And all they're doing is they're reassuring themselves about the booking. They also might do a secondary search because they want to call you, right? Because they can't really call you when they're on, 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 on these OTA platforms. So they're going to seek out your phone number. So you, you could have your phone number on your website and they could call you and say, hey, is there a high chair for the baby, right? Like, or do we need to bring a high chair? And so they've called you. And at that point, when they've called you, you've got this opportunity to say, hey, hold on a second. Rather than booking or going back and booking through an OTA, how about you book with me directly? And now this is the secret to it all, is that from a consumer's perspective, they're thinking, as soon as you say that, they're thinking, ah, oh, that sounds really hard. That sounds horrible. I, no, no, what? So now I have to go through your website. You know, what are the protections? How do I pay? Are you going to steal my credit card? What's up? Why are you asking me to do that? So there's this opportunity, which is there to get direct bookings. But unless the consumer is feeling super comfortable with your book direct website, no matter what you do, you're still not going to get them to convert. So what I'm saying is you've got an audience, right? So you've got these potential customers that are looking to book direct. But now the whole name of the game is, is actually getting them to convert and to get them through that part of the sales funnel. So there's a huge amount of opportunity, but making it happen is the, the harder part, which we don't have to go into detail today, but I think that it's important that people do understand that. Yeah, absolutely. You're right, Bart, because some book direct sites, I'm not going to lie. They look a little sketch. It's like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to put my credit card information in this particular book direct site. So definitely, definitely that you're, you're absolutely right. How do you make them convert? What are, what are the, um, how do we gain that trust? You know, you may be a very nice, honest person, but you know, there, there are um, people out there who aren't so nice, who can, you know, steal information. I work in healthcare you know, our data gets stolen, unfortunately, and then we're held for ransom. And so there's some really smart and cunning people out there in the technology world that are hackers and they're, that are doing malicious things. So if your site does not have the protections, it may not even be something that you're doing wrong or, or that you know to do, but um, it, it can happen to so many people. So this is awesome. So I wrote a few things down. So Bart, tell us what are some of the best strategies when looking and getting into a direct booking site? And I got that question today is, do I need one from day one? I would say maybe not, you know, not to start because my approach is to reduce the overwhelm. You're not going to need it from day one, but it's something that you definitely want to uh, start looking into as you start to build your business out. What are your thoughts, Bart? Look, di the direct booking strategy, it's kind of twofold as we were talking about before. So one is you've got the, you've got two opportunities. One is to convert guests that are kind of already looking um, and to save margin. And to answer your question, it's really simple. If you're saying, oh, should I get a book direct website? It's just a numbers game. So if your property is doing 50,000 or $100,000 a year, and you're gonna pay 15% of that to the OTAs, right? And even if it's Airbnb, and if they're charging that service fee, you can charge that service fee direct. So it's the 15% roughly. Um, then basically what you're saying is that your um, the your paying commission of between fifty seven and a half to fifteen thousand dollars a year in commission. Now, what you need to say to yourself is a book direct site, on average, if you just do the bare minimum, should get between twenty and forty percent direct bookings. So wow. then you go twenty percent of seven and a half thousand dollars, which is uh, uh, fifteen hundred. So then you've got your number. So your 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 opportunities between fifteen hundred and three thousand dollars of extra saving. So that's how you figure it out. If you go, oh, should I get a book direct direct website? That's one part of it. The direct commission saving. That's what the the potential is, and that's what you should do if you do it. If you know what you're doing, you should get that saving. The other part of it is, should I consider the book direct website at the start? Well, if you want to build a database with your own email addresses, and if you want to build a bigger business, then you want to, do you want to consider it as part of your strategy, but do you need it at the start? Absolutely not. Do you want it after three to six months of having the property? Absolutely. 
But on the first in the first bunch of stuff that you're doing when you're setting up the property, putting it onto the OTAs, getting all of that stuff organized and figuring out your processes and your systems and how to your guest experience is far more important than trying to get more guests at that particular stage and, and looking after that marketing part. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it, it poses another question. What's, why do I need an email database? Why do I need my guest email? Why is that even important? The customer is king, right? So if you can have a database of all, all of your previous guests, that's got incredible value. You can then uh, market to them. You can stay in touch with them. And all of the OTAs know this very, very well. Um, all these big businesses, which leverage themselves on customer acquisition, uh, that's what the, the name of the game is. Uh, when Facebook was growing, it wasn't about uh, turning profit. It was just getting as many people using the platform as possible with a view of later on commercializing those particular people. Now, you're a small business owner. You might think, well, I'm never going to grow to the same size as Facebook or one of these huge platforms. But they are very keen to keep those customers' details so that the next time someone books, they book with them or they use their particular platform. So what, and email and that direct communication is so effective, especially if done in the right way, that you can get people to come and rebook with you. They will remember you. You'll be front of mind, especially if they've had an unbelievable experience with you. They're going to want to book with you because they don't want to risk having a bad experience somewhere else. The reason why your profile is so prominent on some of these OTAs, like your face is there, your branding is there, because these OTAs know that the host is absolutely key in this whole equation. So mm -hmm. if you've got the database, it gives you a direct line of communication with those people to be able to um, communicate, sell stuff and that sort of thing. Uh, the hosts that I deal with are in the, the sort of multi-million dollar range. Um, they've got large databases and they're, and then because you're scaling, then you can afford to do regular emails. You can afford to stay in touch with your guests. Now, the one thing that you have to bear in mind is that so doing sales emails and accommodation doesn't really work unless you're like a really cool resort or something. But what the constant branding and that constant staying front of mind is incredibly important. It's also important if you're uh, depending on what target market you're looking at. So if you're looking at um, doing sort of service apartments, sort of for workers and that sort of thing, that email database becomes second to none. Uh, the sort of the casual traveler, the leisure traveler, that's a lot more difficult because the, the likelihood of someone coming to exactly the same spot twice in a row, like either you've got them for life, right? They'll come every single year for the rest of their lives, or it's hard to get them to come back to that same spot because normally they like to choose and go to different places unless you've got a pandemic and then everyone goes to the same place that they, they like, right? So long answer to the question, but the, the email database... Um, and it's not just emails, it's phone numbers as well. And what's happening is you're going to have phone numbers, then as soon it's going to be, you're going to want them as Instagram followers as well. But you need whatever mediums they're using to, to communicate with, you need to be in, in, in touch with them because it's low hanging fruit. You don't, there's no money spent to get to communicate with those people, no marketing dollars, and then you can get them to come back. Otherwise, people go into onto Facebook and then it starts to advertise and you have to pay money to get those same customers to come back. It's a little bit crazy. But yes, the database can be super useful. Oh, that's so good, Bart. That was a mini mastermind right there because I think that I'm serious. I think it's something that we take for granted. The customer is king and their data is king, right? Having access to the email address and you even gloss over real quick the phone number too because we do know that People will look at their phones, you know, and they have access to their phones. Sometimes they may not get to that email, but they'll see that text message. And one more thing that you touched on, which was so key, and it's going to impact us significantly, Bart. There's a huge infrastructure bill that is on the table here in the U.S. And so we expect a lot of travel workforce uh, folks traveling to different locations you know, as a team in order to um, build and work and so on and so forth. A lot of digital nomads, a lot of travel workers will be looking for housing. So how does your property stand out from the sea of other properties? How do you make yourself the 
workforce housing, you know, mogul, so to speak, if that is your line of business, and you did mention it, that having that direct booking site is almost a necessity, having access to that database is a necessity, especially for that for that model. But I will tell you, I know people who go on vacation and they want to go to the same spot year after year after year. Like you said, they had a great experience. They will seek out that homeowner and say, hey, as they're leaving for Thanksgiving, they will book the next Thanksgiving because they felt as though the spot was a great space. And to be able to provide them a direct booking site, a way to book directly and not necessarily go through an OTA, I think is key. Okay, what were your best first steps for newbies? I, I love this question. And this was, uh, this was one of the ones where, from what you were just talking about, Rachel, you're saying, you know, the email database, that always, that to me, especially if I'm getting into it, I've only got a couple of properties, it can be quite overwhelming and a lot of work. It really is a lot of work to figure it out to figure out to get this database. And your first database, right? It's going to have 20 people on it. And you're going to be sitting there and like, oh, do I have to write an email? Don't write an email to 20 people. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of effort. And as a newbie, it's kind of, you know, you should be improving your property. You should be building the database, but don't try to leverage the database and think that something's going to happen. It's still very small. So as a small operator, and if you've just started, having um, a, a really good landing page is a good starting point, okay? So you want to figure out some sort of a domain name for your property. Uh, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, and I'll, I'll take you through some of the steps that, that you need to think about. When you're building your first website, you can just set up a, a very simple website on any of the free platforms, and it's going to be sort of like beautiful accommodation in your in your uh, whatever location the, uh, the, the accommodation is, .com, right? That's your first website name. And then what you'll do is you'll have all the bits about your property. You'll have a few great reviews on there, and then you'll have a, a method for people to contact you directly. That's the first thing that you do if you don't use us to help you build a book direct website, otherwise I just build you one. Um, but you can do that. And what I want you to do is I want you to find methodology on starting to gather people's email addresses and methodology in terms of getting them to leave you reviews that aren't just on Airbnb, that aren't just on the OTAs, but you want them to be on TripAdvisor, and you want your reviews on your own Google My Business. If you're a newbie, the website, Google My Business, get the reviews. Just do that. It's going to take six or 12 months for that traffic to, to, to build up, but Google will love you for it. It will reward you for it. It will send you guests. It will. What? Uh, if you if, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, well, this is, the, this is the biggest hack. This is how I built a few multi-million dollar businesses. It's just as simple as that. And a lot of people don't know about this. So as a newbie, just get that part going. So either you get a book to accept website with us, set up a free one with your own domain name. It's not, not a huge amount of effort. And now, so you say, okay, Bart, now, so how do I get those reviews? All you do is you just send them a message afterwards. Your Google My Business will have a little link that says, please leave me a review. You're going to send them an email or a, or a message. You're going to say, hey, thanks a lot for staying with us. I'm a small business operator. I'm really trying hard to do my best um, to grow my business. If you appreciated my hospitality, I would appreciate if you could leave me a review. Now, one thing that a lot of um, hosts do is they always think of their business not as them. Whatever you do, if you're small, always brand it as you. You need to be in there. You need, you're need. you the one. You know, my, my stay was with Rachel. People want to stay with Rachel. I don't want to stay just with a brand. I want to stay with Rachel. Would I leave a review for Rachel? Absolutely. I'd feel bad not to leave that review. So start to get some reviews on independent platforms because then later on, you'll be able to leverage all of that goodwill and all of those reviews that aren't just on one OTA platform and then that's going to help to strengthen your business in the long run. And if you've got a thousand positive reviews or 500 or 50 positive reviews, it's so much easier to then get them to convert when they try to book direct. Um, so that's what you do as a, as a newbie to get started. If you've got two or three properties, um, it's, it's all the same methodology, but you do in terms of your book direct website, you need to have a strategy in terms of whether how they fit together. And the other tip that I'm going to give today 
is if you have disparate properties that do not make sense to a consumer, they cannot be on the same book direct website. I'm going to say that again. If they're disparate properties that don't make sense to a consumer, don't have them on a book direct website together. It's not going to work. You need to have a lead funnel for each one. So if you've got a property in New York and one in LA, not on the same website, it doesn't make sense, right? You'll need two different websites, one for the best LA accommodation, blah. The New York one is for people who go to New York. So have a New York funnel. So it's really important with your book direct strategies. And you might go, well, I need 10 different websites. Not necessarily. It depends on how you build the brand. Um, hopefully that answers the question for the newbies. Oh my gosh, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> you're not pulling any, you, you take no prisoners, my friend. That was so good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next question from net to saint the question is, how do you get guests to give you the email to create the email list? Any tips ah, or tricks? <laughs> yeah. So look, I'm not going to comment on the terms of conditions of, of Airbnb and of the, of the booking websites. I don't know how far you're allowed to go in terms of asking them on the chat in the chat for their email addresses and stuff. And I, I wouldn't make any advice on that because I just don't know. And I don't really play that game at all. One of the things that I, I do do is uh, there are a few different things you can do. And this is another top tip for you, which is beyond direct bookings. It's um, the use of QR codes. So we're all used to QR codes now, right? So checking into places and that sort of thing. It's very easy for you to put QR codes around your property. And when you start putting, start putting QR codes in, that's when you can use that to, to ask for things from your guests. So, and also give them information. So this is one of my top tips, by the way. If in your Airbnb, you've got a problem which is super common, right? Like every single person that comes just doesn't know how to use the, the air conditioner. They always get it wrong, always. Every single time they don't know. So you print out the manual, right? Everyone gets the manual and prints it out and then blah. Or another example, they don't know where the property is. Every time they get there, they don't know how to get in. The key's not working, the blah, they don't know what to do. Make a video of how to use it. Hi, it's Rachel. I'm going to show you how to use this air conditioner. Blah, 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 blah. You take them through the instructions, get that video, pop it on YouTube, create a QR code, put up the QR code next to the air conditioner. And next time they're going to have video instructions on how to do it. And then that all of a sudden saves a lot out of your business. Now for the email addresses, you can do exactly the same sort of stuff. You could create some engaging content just saying, hey guys, thanks for staying with us. Uh, leave us your email address. And next time you come, we'll give you a book direct link plus 5% off, you know, or 20 bucks off or 50 bucks off. And they go, oh, great. Okay, I'll do that. And then you can ask for, you can ask for all sorts of things. No matter what you do, do not overwhelm your guests with too many of these QR codes. Now that you've figured it out, you'll be tempted to go and start posting them everywhere. Um, you'll want their review, the email address. You're going to go, oh, can you give me your phone number? Don't do that. <laughs> think about it from the guest perspective and always think of how you can be of service to them. You're in a hospitality business and then they will, you, when they do it, they have to say, the, the feeling has to be, oh, thanks. I'm glad I did that. They have to feel good or whatever. If they're not thanking you for whatever you've asked them to do, don't do it. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers that question for the email addresses. Um, and yeah, so there's lots of other ways you can you can do it as well. Sort of leverage it through the process of them booking, of them staying. You should be checking in with your guests mid-stay. Um, at that point, you can say, hey, can I grab your email address so that I can, you know, stay in touch with you in the future, give you more offers and stuff like that. Or you could go call them up mid-stay, go, hey, how's everything going? Hey, do you, wanna, do you want me to send you a guide for the local area? Yeah, yeah, great. And then Theo. So lots of different strategies, just depending on, on what your business looks like, but you're, you're building this email stuff. It has to be to scale and you don't want to have to do too much manual labor because yes, the emails are valuable, but it's a big distraction as well from the real driver of your business, which is that profitability. You know, you, you know, if you've got 50 properties, you're not, you've got to make sure that that's scalable. So good. Oh my goodness. This was so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Alex says, now Alex is my buddy. He's in the healthcare profession as well, Bart. So oh, yeah, yeah. We, we became <laughs> friends on Facebook this morning, actually, as well. So he's uh, one to watch because he's, he's, you know what? I'll say one thing. If you want to be successful in anything, 
you just got to be curious. If you stay super curious yeah. and you make those connections, you will just learn and you'll it'll be like a sponge. And that's what Alex is doing. He's just curious. He's asking curious questions um, and he's genuinely interested. So yes, go for it. What's the question? So he says, our brand is Tanya's Cabin because we bought in the Smoky Mountains. We are under contract in Gulf Shores of Alabama, which is another hot market, by the way, uh, a beach community. Do you change the branding? So the brand is Tanya's Cabin, but mm -hmm. now they have a beach house bar. Help. <laughs> this is the most common problem I get all the time. And it's one of those ones where there's many experts who will tell you, oh, you need a website, bang them all on there. And then what happens, uh, Alex, is all of a sudden you try, you're you trying to become an OTA and you will never be as good as the OTAs ever because they've got access to more stock. They've got huge teams. So don't try to replicate what they're doing. It's not going to work. It, it, uh, look, if I haven't been uh, stood corrected on this particular point yet. If someone could show me an example of a great independent OTA of, of people's own properties, then great. But even property managers that I work with, with a 500 to 1,000 properties, having them all on one platform, they don't get many direct bookings. It just doesn't work. So Alex, for your question, you said you've got the, the cabins and now you've got uh, seaside uh, uh, locations. So it's two different sales funnels for your guests. If someone's looking to stay the, on the beach, they're looking to stay on the beach. They're not looking for cabins. Unless you disagree that they're, they're just going to choose, like all of a sudden they're going to change their mind and go, oh, I wasn't, well, I was going to go to the beach. Now I'm going to go get a cabin to a cabin or vice versa. It just does not happen. A guest will not think like that. But if you're Googling, right, and they go, ah, oh, beautiful, I want to stay in a beautiful romantic cabin and you come up, there's a good chance that you're going you're gonna to get them to convert if you've got the cabins. Now, if you put the beachfront stuff on that website, they're going to go, hold on a second. Are these cabins or is this the beach? And now you're starting to create confusion. And that confusion is what will put them off immediately. They'll leave. They just, they'll just go, you know what? I don't get it. It's too hard. Uh, I'll go back to, to, to an easier way to book. So for you, Alex. Bye, right, Bart? The confused, me? the confused mind doesn't buy. Correct. So keep it simple. So for you, Alex, if, and this is my big advice, there's a lot of people that start to add more properties. And the problem with that you have is you don't know yet what you're going to pick up. You don't know what investment opportunities are going to be there. You don't know whether you're going to go luxury or whether you're going to go budget or whether you're going to go beachside or mountains or buy an amusement park and do themed properties. You don't know exactly what you're going to do. So what you need to do as your master brand, as a property manager, you need to think about what your core values are. And you need to think about what is it that makes people want to stay with us? So Rachel, what would be the reasons? <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. What would be the reasons for people to stay with your portfolio of properties? Why would someone choose to stay in with your particular properties as opposed to someone else's? Because our ideal guest avatar is large families looking for luxury accommodations that accommodate uh, pets and provide a luxury feel. Correct. So, so Rachel's figured out that the luxury, she's figured out her, her, her niche and her avatar. Um, things that you'll want to think about as well will be things like um, stay with Alex's properties because they're clean we pride ourselves on our cleanliness we pride ourselves on our ease of check-in we pride ourselves on our 100 percent positive reviews we pride ourselves on having the best guidebooks uh, that you could possibly get your hands on so what you're doing is you're alex you're figuring out your core values for your property management business and then all of those core values will then stick with any sub brand that you create. So if you create a the cabins, great, still all the same core values. Then you can create a second brand, which is the um, the the beach houses, right? By Alex's brand, and then the third one, which will be themed accommodation by Alex's brand. But you still got those same core values, so that from a consumer's perspective, if they go to one website, they can go. 
and you send them down the different funnels, they go, oh yeah, I, I trust Alex. I've stayed at his uh, accommodations before, but then you're niching down to what they're looking for, be it luxury, be it budget. So Rachel, you, you could, under this structure, create a budget brand. How would you do it? You could do it under that big master brand, or you can create completely separate ones, but then it's hard to leverage what you've already got, right? The, the customer database, you can't use it twice. But if you've got the master brand and it's all by Rachel Gainsborough's um, group, then that's how you build those sub brands that kind of fit under the top one. That's a good one. That's a good one. And I'm glad it's something that was not foreign to you because those are the things that keep us up at night, right? Ali's like, how do we? <laughs> <laughs> but Bart has figured it out. All and right. if you want to have a look at that, um, vacationfuntimes.com, you'll see we've got Cardinal Hill isn't built, but we've got cabins. We've got a premium brand, which we're building out. Then we've got, uh, there'll be more of a budget brand. So building out these different things, but it's all vacation fun times. So you go on vacation to have a fun time. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. And so Alex made a comment. He says, you broke down my listing on Clubhouse last Sunday still working on the listing and I really want a better website. Yeah, look, the idea of the room is to give back. And what we want to do is we want to help uh, accommodation owners, managers, short-term rental hosts, uh, property managers figure out how to make the most out of their online presence. You have to appreciate that, yes, you're in hospitality, but also the shop front of your business, it's all digital. You don't really have, you know, the yellow pages anymore. You don't really have um, you know, people driving up or a tourism information center it just doesn't exist. So your online brand and your online presence is, is incredibly important to make sure that you get bookings in general. Now, I, I'm not, you know, I do book direct websites because I see there's a huge opportunity. But if you're on Airbnb, I want you to be very successful on Airbnb. If you're on booking.com, I want you to be successful. And I want you to use those platforms and create unbelievable listings. And no one really helps you with that stuff. Like people know stuff, but they don't really know what the best bits to do, to do are. And if they really know what to do, they won't share it with you. And the reason why they won't share it with you is because they want to beat you at it. Um, so uh, what we do is with Tracy Northcutt, uh, once every two weeks, we spend uh, an hour, an hour and a half going through people's listings to help them out, to find opportunities like the titles, the pricing, the photos and that and that sort of thing so that's where uh where alex uh, had met us and seen us before but that's something that we do do that is awesome guys and you know what um if you go and get a consultant to do this for you you pay a pretty penny so i, I appreciate you giving back in that way because <laughs> that is pricey to do to have someone get laser focused and give you some uh tips on how to update your listing to make it for the better I just think what a what a value. So thank you for that. Chris says, what if it is a vacation properties website with properties in the mountains and properties in the beach area? I think we covered some of this. Can you keep them on the same website since it is all about amazing vacations versus New York or LA? Only one property now, but adding more in multiple markets. And he shares his website, Flying Pig Vacations. <laughs> I love that name, Flying Pig Vacations. And it's an absolutely lovely website. So I think you kind of touched on that a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, I mean, it was kind of funny because it's almost the identical problem that both of these hosts are, <laughs> are handling at the moment. Um, so... I'm just having a quick look at your website, Chris Lloyd. And if anyone is watching along and wants to have a look, it's flyingpigvacations.com. Um, so the answer is this. As you get the second property, I really want you to have a good think about if someone's looking at a flying pig and they're looking to book uh, that particular location, should they be distracted with other stuff? And by other stuff, we're talking about blogs. We're talking about links to stuff that isn't relevant. We're talking about links to accommodation, which is not relevant to them. So they're looking for an accommodation to Smoky Mountains and all of a sudden they're seeing something that just doesn't make any sense to them. Don't do it. There's no value. There's no point. You're not going to get ranked higher on Google. You're not going to drive more conversions because, because of that. What's going to drive more conversions for you, Chris, on the Flying Pig Lodge is by having your reviews somewhere higher up on the webpage, having dynamic reviews and pulling them in to your listing so, you, so people can see you know, what your ratings are. 
and then they're going to convert because the website's nice. It's going to work relatively well when you do your second property. Yeah, that's the, that's the second property. But what you might want to do is where you've got the flying pig vacations, what well, that one might become the landing page, which we, we talked about that, right? With all of the different brand promises, what does the flying pig vac vacations mean? And then under that, you can then have our beach locations, our mountain locations. And then what might happen is you might go, oh, actually, this isn't working because they're not all in the mountain, and but they are in the same location. So then you might go, all right, so we've got three of them that are in the Smoky Mountains, but it's not, they're not all the same. And you might say, well, what, what ties them together? And you might, you might rebrand it to the best Smoky Mountains accommodation.com. All right, cool. And then you, so what, as you add properties, it always kind of evolves and changes. And the good thing is the websites, they're not incredibly expensive to build anymore. I mean, like with us, you're spending one to $2,000 for each setup. Um, and then that gets you going. And then like that, the return on investment is so huge that you just keep them running that. Otherwise, if you do it wrong and you think, oh, I'll just, I'll just get one website and try to do it all, that sort of thing, it's not going to work. You're not going to get a return on investment, which is completely pointless. It defies the point. So don't, just don't build it wrong. I prefer you not to have a website rather than to build it wrong um, and it not do anything for you, which most people achieve quite effectively if not building websites that don't do anything. Wow. And that's, that is so powerful. And since it's coming up multiple times, Bart, you're right. This is something that is probably common in your industry. The same uh, type of questions. What if I have one here and one there? So the, the message is we want to have a clearly defined, you know, funnel for each, because then we don't want to confuse our guest avatar. That is the message that I'm getting from you. Correct. Correct. And it's, it's particularly hard when you get going because you don't really know exactly who you are, what your brand is and what properties you're going to pick up and what it's going to look like. Um, you will need to focus a little bit and you'll find that that's natural within your business anyway, that you don't want to pick up too many properties that are too disparate in terms of uh, their, their makeup. So, you know, if you're getting places that all have swimming pools, getting one without a swimming pool could be quite problematic with everything that you're doing because it just changes your processes or all of a sudden you've got places with, um, yeah, with those pools and then you decide to get an apartment and that apartment that doesn't fit can be quite problematic because yes, it might generate some revenue, but it's really not enough and it doesn't fit into the structures of how you, that you always book the pool cleaner, that you always do this, there's always two days to check out. Um, on all of this structure that you've created. So you'll find that as you grow, you'll add, you'll add them more. So that's why going back to the previous question at the start was, how do I get started with all of this? Well, get the properties, put them on their OTAs, get a bit of traction, get some money going, and then you're going to start to build up that database and you're going to start to create those, those, those landing pages and as you build a business, then you're, all right, I'm ready to start merging things together and creating a bigger brand um, that makes sense to a consumer. That makes a lot of sense, Bart. So you've already touched um, on a couple of pitfalls that you've seen. Can you tell us a few more pitfalls? Because I know the bug is out there. Everyone's been bit by the direct booking sites bug. Uh, they're feeling a certain kind of way about the OTAs, about sometimes being restricted or being banned off the OTA for whatever reason. And so before that becomes an emergent situation where I need a direct booking site sat, um, let us know now ahead of time, what are some pitfalls that you see when we're looking to build um, a direct booking site? Yeah, so one of the, the, the most common things that people do is they, they get into this space and then they learn about a channel manager and they learn about a property management system. And then the next logical thing is, oh, they've got a free website builder and they build the website and yes, it's going to be okay but it's not going to work the way that you want it to. That's probably one of the biggest pitfalls that I see. It's not agile. It's not versatile. It doesn't really work. It's kind of like a, a band-aid to the problem for most channel managers and PMS systems. And um, I get to see them all the time. And I go, oh, I, it just doesn't work the way it should. Now, I really want to stress this uh, um, point that if the booking process isn't easy for the consumer, they're just not going to do it. They're just going to be like, you know what, too hard. And they'll revert back to what's easier. That's why all of these big platforms like Amazon are doing incredibly well, because it's just easy. You go, you know how it works. Airbnb, just easy. Most of them, just easy. So if your website isn't 
there. And if it doesn't convey the message that this will be really easy, guys, trust me, you know, you're asking for a lot of trust before they even met you that, that when they start that process, they're going to get through to the end. What's, what's the worst thing that could happen? You get through towards the end and something doesn't work and then you're stuck and you're like, oh God, I spent all that time and I didn't get the direct, I didn't get that booking made. So it has to be easy. So the most common pitfall that I see is people just going, ah, oh, okay, no, I'll just get it. I built a website. That's number one. Number two, avoid getting a development expert or a website designer off the high street. Might be a bit con controversial, but get best in class, best in breed, someone that understands this space. There is so much complexity in accommodation alone that you need someone that understands how it all works, how it's put together, um, what, what a minimum night stays is, um, what is, you know, how are pricing um, tools work and all that kind of stuff. So avoid going the high street. If you go to a web developer, and you say, hey, I need a, a website for my accommodation. And if they say to you, well, what do you want on the website? That's when you know you're going down the wrong path. It's not up to the web developer to ask you what you want because you don't know anything about what you want. I'll be honest with you, because you're not the expert. You don't know. I know because I do this all the time. I've spent many years building these sites. I know exactly what you need, but you don't know what you need. So don't let them tell you because then what you'll do is you'll go and Google and go, what do I need on a website? And all of a sudden you're building a members area and you're building a loyalty program and you're building a blog and a newsletter. You're building all this crap that you don't need that isn't fulfilling the function. So those are some of the pitfalls that you really want to avoid. Um, keep it simple would be my other big tip. Awesome. Oh my gosh. You're so funny, Bart. Oh. <laughs> I, I get myself in trouble, aren't I? <laughs> oh no, it's fantastic. it's fantastic because that's that's the first step. I need a web developer. I need a software engineer. I need a designer. <laughs> I'm gonna go to that person, you know, the best of the best, you know, and pay a high price <laughs> for a product that is not going to convert. I've seen a lot of organizations do this. So I've, I've worked in some pretty big, big companies doing this sort of stuff. And the, the worst is when the customer comes and they've got this spec list of all these different things that they want. I'm like, how is that ever going to work? How? Let's say, for example, let's say you get your website, you say, I want a members area. And I'm going to say, well, how, who's going to log into the members area if they're booking at the Flying Pig, right? Like who's going to book? Why are they going to log in? Oh, what, to check on their booking? Well, they've got an email. Why do they need to do that? Oh, well, we're going to build the loyalty point, uh, loyalty system. Like, how often is that going to get used? It might get used once, one time by somebody. There's no return on investment on it. And then you go down this big rabbit hole, big rabbit hole. So that's what it's really confronting. It's really challenging. You have to know who to trust. And what you're looking at is uh, if, if you do go to someone, you want to say, can you show me an example of it working? And then they need to show you not like a demo or whatever they go working and then you need to be able to contact that person who's using with the service and go hey you know does it all work is it getting direct bookings and they'll go yeah it does it's awesome or not um that's why our um our customers are so important to us because if you talk to pretty much any of our customers they'll be raving about us going oh they're awesome um because we know what we do yeah, and that's and that's why I have you here today, honestly, because I want to offer the value to the people in this group. And it, there are so many options out there and there are so many ways to be led astray. So I definitely uh, wanted you here to share with them what some of those pitfalls were and what to avoid. And here's another thing that we didn't really discuss, Bart. So you you hit the nail on the head when you said you will never be Airbnb, you, you will never be an OTA, you and you won't, right? But at the same time, your property can get bookings that would really rival and compete with Airbnb, depending on how you position your, your property, depending on how you position your booking site. So for us, um, when I hear that a property their direct booking site is um, getting 30 or 40% conversions. That's impressive. That's huge because Airbnb has such market share, right? And so mm -hmm. using that little channel manager free website that I have, I built it on my own and I thought I was the cat's meow that got zero bookings. It's been up over a year, zero bookings, right? 
I don't think I know how to book on it. I get to a place and then I'm, how, you, how, how are your websites converting? Because because now that's why I enlisted you and we need to, now that my launch is over, we need to circle back. I've enlisted your help. What has your conversions been for your clients? What, what are the clients um, that um, you've been able to help convert? What types of properties do they have? Give us some yeah. percentages that um, they're getting, their, their direct booking percentages versus OTA percentages. Yeah. There, there is a question that this kind of leads into. So I'll, I'll take you guys down the journey a little bit so that you can understand what what sort of what happened. So, um, Chris, I think one of the, the questions everyone says is, when do I get going on this? For your website to do well, you're looking about six to 12 months for it to really start to do anything. So if you call me today, you say, hey, Bart, what you're saying was awesome. Let's go. I'm like, All right, cool. Six months. And then you go, what? And I go, you know, no. no. We need, it's going to take us a month or two to get everything in place. I'll do all the work. That's what my team does. But a month or two, because I need the address. I need the photos. I need all these bits and pieces, right? And we've got to figure out well, exactly what we're doing. We plug it all in. Then six to 12 months before we're going to start to see Google start to do what it does. We've got to wait for a postcard to come from Google My Business, for example. That can take, it can take a week. It can take six months. Literally, it's, it's crazy. So you're waiting for all of that stuff. And then once you've got all of that going, then, then things start to pick up and those conversion ratios start to go up. The best case scenario, I worked with a client and their website had been hacked when I, when I met with them. It wasn't working. It wasn't doing what it should do. Um, they went from sort of 10, 20%, uh, 10 to 20% book direct. Um, they were a alpaca farm, um, really, really cool sort of niche <laughs> product. And we didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but because they had a unique selling point, which was the alpacas, they very quickly realized, hold on a second, Google is just pulling us up the rankings so strong that they decided to go book direct solely without telling me about it. They didn't say, hey, Bart, we're now relying our entire income on your website that you built for us. I was like, oh, geez. And they'd done it without telling me. Um, so that's, that's a, a good scenario. And uh, now they've got little upsells. So they, they do a, a, an alpaca farm tour for 200 bucks or whatever on the side, like, oh, and they just take them around and feed some alpacas. It's awesome. You know, some pictures. So that's the, that's a, a good, good case scenario. We've got, um, um, we've got some clients that we work with and generally, uh, Rachel, if you had already a website with a presence, just by switching over, you'll get 20 to, uh, about 10 to 30% book direct. I can't give you the exact number because I don't, uh, you know, it's hard to say. It just depends on how much traction the website has got. Um, then if you get more advanced and more sophisticated, especially in the luxury market, there is an opportunity to go 80 to 100% book direct. Um, I know of, of a guy's, uh, Michael Shrogan, he was telling me the other day that he's pretty much uh, almost exclusively book direct on, on some of his properties. Um, so it just, it depends, but um, look, it's That's huge. Yeah. Look, I, if it's under 10%, things are, aren't great, but even at 10%, 10% of the seven and a half thousand dollars that we said before that 750 bucks a year extra in your pocket. And hopefully you haven't had to work for it too hard. Um, and also uh, one last thing. Uh, when people think websites, they also quite often think Instagram, uh, socials, marketing, doing what you, you and I do, Rachel. You don't have to push really hard on it. You can choose depending on how big your, your business is, but you just do, you know, just have, make sure all the profiles are all correct, looking good. And then you don't have to constantly be pushing and driving as long as you've got everything in place. They'll just come naturally through Google and through secondary searches. So if you go OTA, then they look for your property and then they find it. Uh, the Flying Pig is an, a really great example of that because if that brand is strong enough on an OTA, then they will do that secondary search. Nice, nice. And I do love that Flying Pig Vacations name. So thank you for sharing that. So question from net to saints should your cancellation refund process be in line with the OTA's rules and regulations? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's a tricky one because it depends on what, what you've got them on there. But uh, the, 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 all of your policies should be fitting with what your business should be catering to. 
So there are additional ones that you need on your Book Direct website. So be it ID verification, uh, be it refunds, uh, be it um, uh, security deposits, uh, that kind of stuff. You need to make sure that if you're getting direct bookings that your insurance will cover it correctly. And generally, you know, even if you're an OTA, whatever policies they have in place, generally they're there not to protect you as much as it is to protect the OTA. So if you, you need to make sure you've got your liability insurance, your contents insurance, and then you've got your house insurance or the building insurance as well. So all of those three to make sure that if something happens that you are protected um, and especially if you've got high value items in the property, that becomes another level. If you've got swing pools and all that kind of stuff, you know, look, I don't know enough about, about the intricacies of all this, you know, protection. That's why you talk to an insurance broker who sorts it out. So that's number one, make sure you've got that. The reason why I mentioned the insurance side of it is because generally the insurance guys will want to see your terms and conditions and provide the insurance on the back of terms and conditions because they look at it and go, all right, cool, no, this all makes sense, cool, we can see what liability we've got. Um, so uh, you want to, so that's where you want to kind of get that balance right. The OTA terms and conditions are generally really, really good. Um, so you know you want to mirror as much of it as you possibly can, and that's what what we encourage people that use uh, uh, or did book direct, did create book direct websites have do. That is fantastic. And I'm looking in here. So net to saints, I hope that was helpful. I hope you found some value for, uh, from that. So insurance is, so you did mention a few things. Okay. So if we are looking at book direct, we need to add a few quote unquote, I'm calling them plugins. I'm just making it up plugins. So the insurance component is huge. You mentioned the guest screening is going to be huge. You're going to be doing your own guest screening. What are some other things? Are there a few other things, plugins that the OTAs are doing for us and we take it for granted, but now we have to do it ourselves when we're booking direct? What are some yeah, things? Look, are I, think, I think that there's a little bit of over-reliance over on saying, hey, the OTAs will take care of all that stuff. Look, I, I really don't want to go into specifics of each particular one, because it, but it, a lot of it is my opinion rather than fact, because I just don't know. But my understanding is that um, you like if someone's going to stay in my property, I want to know who it is. I don't care whether they've had an ID check done by an OTA. I want to know who's staying, especially in COVID times. I want to know who their guests are, right? So I'm going to make sure that I gather that. I don't put that in my book direct process. I then, I always go afterwards and follow up and grab all the information afterwards. Remember that when you're trying to get direct bookings or when you're trying to get someone to do something and give credit card numbers and provide their details, the more friction points you put in, the more the lower your conversion rates are. are. And you can see it dramatically on, on, on the graphs, right? You can just see, oh, we've asked them for their ID. Oh, now we only get, you know, a third of the business that we used to. If we ask for it afterwards, they'll still provide it. Um, and we reserve the right to cancel the booking. ID checks are, are definitely necessary. The security deposit is an interesting one and, and different people deal with it in different ways. Uh, so some people will call up and grab a credit card um, to, to hold the, the money on there and they can use a separate payment provider. There are solutions out there that, that, that provide that option. Some people are, are like, you know what, I, the security deposit isn't that important to me. It depends on the property that you're dealing with and that sort of thing. So um, I think, uh, yeah, security deposit, um, the ID stuff. Actually, I did a, an episode on my podcast that came out this week with the CEO of safely.com. Mm -hmm. So safely.com provides all of this kind of cover, right? And all that happens, the guest pays an extra, uh, an extra 30 bucks and, and safely.com take care of a lot of this stuff for you. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, have a, have a watch of that one. If you are worried about this sort of stuff, because um, he also talks about risk and things that you do. So when you're, uh, looking at guests coming to stay with you. And this it can be on an OTA as well. When you feel things aren't right, that's when you need to start digging. And what you do is you start to dig. And you start to go, hey, can I get your ID? And then they give you the ID. And if something doesn't look right, then you go, all right, so I've got your ID. Now I need a security deposit. And if you don't get a security deposit, you go, hey, I'm going to cancel the booking. When it starts to smell fishy, <laughs> start to dig. And what you're doing is you're creating friction points for them not to be able to stay. 
until, and if they pass all the friction points, then they're good, right? But, and you do it in the nicest way possible. So there's a bit of hospitality that's involved in that. Um, but that's how you start to de-risk a lot of this stuff um, is, is that uh, you might, if you think that it's a risky booking, then you're going to make sure that you turn up and you welcome them for check-in. Right. Other ones, you might do the remote check in. You might go, actually, I'm going to have to turn up for this one. I'm not feeling good about it. Something isn't sitting quite right. The stars haven't aligned for this booking. I need to be there. So those are, those are little steps. But uh, the incidence of problems with properties, according to, to, to my man, it safely is, is very low. But have a look at that, that, that review. And I, I don't have any, any data around that. But it's an interesting point, And it's like probably the most anxiety causing for most people. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that is a big question that we do get is about risk mitigation and insurance. So definitely, I've been curious about Safely. I'll definitely listen to that podcast. Bar. How can we find your podcast? Uh, you just Google me. So check me into Google. So uh, Bart Sobies, as my name is on the screen. And then if you type in YouTube after that, then I'll come up. You type in the accommodation show or ibooked.online. I'll also, um, uh, yeah, if you go to ibooked.online forward slash Bart, B-A-R-T, then you'll also get to all of my links with all of the different bits and pieces in there. Awesome, awesome. Will we have a way to get a consultation with you, work with you? What if we want to work with you and talk with you one-on-one -on -one about our personal situation with our direct booking sites or lack thereof? Yeah, look, uh, thanks for asking. And I am going to give you guys a special offer. So all you have to do is mention that you heard this podcast and that you're part of this particular community. Um, and we're willing to give a 25% discount to anyone that signs up with us. Um, what you would do is you would reach out to me and you say, hey, Bart, this is what I'm dealing with. How do I solve the problem? The one thing is, is that there's no one size fits all for everybody because everyone's got a different business. It works a little bit differently. Um, but generally, the way that we try to structure it, just depending on what software you're using, there's two structures. One is where we um, just plug into the, your existing channel manager. And then we set up the website, we get that all working. And we have another partnership model. And if you go under the partnership model, which you, it's a lot harder to get part of. We don't do it with everybody, but then we take a small commission of the booking. Now you might think, wait, to be a partner, you're paying commission, but it's a good thing because what that means is that now you've got our team a lot more invested in trying to help you and facilitate you getting more direct bookings because we've got a cut that comes in. So um, we take roughly about a third or if not a, a fifth of what an OTA would normally take. And that just keeps us hungry to towards driving you towards more business success. But just get in touch with me. Um, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on the YouTube channel, ibook.online. Get in touch. Uh, Instagram as well, Bart Sobies. Just find my name, Google me, hit me up. Um, and then either I'll, I'll help you or one of my team will, will jump on and, and we'll find a solution to help you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bart. Guys, thank you for hanging out with us tonight, this Wednesday night. Bart, this offered so much value, gave us a lot of clarity um, on the pressing questions in our minds. Uh, it, it's clear, guys, we need a direct booking site, period. <laughs> we need to start <laughs> heading in that direction in some way, shape or form. It takes time to build, like you said, six months, but there's no reason not to start getting, you know, are, are dipping our toe in there and getting it going so that in six months we can start getting those direct bookings. So I appreciate you so much, Bar. You are an ally. You are a partner to us. You're a friend. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you have a great rest of your day. Yeah. And yeah, thank you. And you're doing an amazing job in this space. You're so driven, so motivated, putting out great content. So I've got a huge amount of respect and admiration for what you're doing. So I feel privileged to be here and have the opportunity to talk to everyone. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Bart. Appreciate you. Bye for now. Talk to you Take later. Care.